Some awesome games are getting some awesome boosts on the Xbox Series platforms. NASA's not only flying choppers on Mars, they're making oxygen there too. And I've got my review of the new Mortal Kombat movie. All that and the latest and everything cool today in The Rundown. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all having a terrific Thursday. Um, I am excited to talk about that Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for joining me on the uh, rundown and then EPN plays immediately following. So that's what we do. We roll with the rundown live and then we just go right into EPN plays. So do stick around. We've got some news to get into. I'm going to be talking about the uh, the Mortal Kombat flick. I see you, Liquor Run. I see you, Hi There, and Randall Hyatt and Rathless. Thank you for hitting, uh, saying congrats on 61K. That's super cool. Peter Kokasar. Uh, Sulaku88, uh, Sulaku88, good to see everybody. Let's get started. Uh, I'm going to do the intro again so I can make a nice clean edit for the archive. All right, there we go. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. My name is Victor Lucas, and today we have got a terrific rundown for you, and it's brought to us by our friends at the Gaming Stadium. They are Canada's leader in online esports tournament facilitation with tournaments going on every weekend. You won't want to miss out on the action. You can join up with them at tgs.gg. All right, today is uh, dedicated to my friend James Brooks, who's in the chat and says, hello, all you awesome people. That's a very kind comment to make there, uh, James, but you're absolutely correct. Everybody here is an awesome person. Let's get started with your rundown. So today started out pretty good. We have uh, a new announcement from Xbox about FPS boost that's going to be affecting a bunch of really big EA games. They tweeted about it, and then they wrote a big post about it on uh, Major Nelson's page on Xbox.com. And the list is actually pretty impressive. It's growing and growing, and there were a bunch of EA games added to everything today. Uh, you can see Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4 and 5 and Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I thought it was pretty crazy that we're getting some plants versus zombies type action in there that's going to get 120 uh, frames per second boost going up from I, I think it was possibly hitting 60 um, which is pretty remarkable so this is going to go up quite a bit uh, if you've got an Xbox Series S or an Xbox Series uh, X you have to activate it in uh, your options uh, of course Star Wars Battlefront 2 is also getting a glorious upgrade to 120 frames per second, which is insane. Every time I see Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, graphics or visuals, I am just completely blown away. I want to drop everything and go back and play that. Same thing can be said for Titanfall 2, which is uh, my personal favorite first-person shooter of all time. This also gets the boost up to 120 frames per second, and uh, it's just a glorious, glorious experience. But it was also really cool to see games like Mirror's Edge Catalyst added to this list here as well. This is Kind of a cult uh, sensation. It was kind of weird for DICE to dip back into the pool here and bring us another parkour-flavored Mirror's Edge experience. Uh, but they did a pretty good job with Catalyst, and I think it would be fascinating to check this out at 120 frames per second. Same thing with Battlefield Five, also from DICE, along with a nice collection of Battlefield titles out there. This was already, you know, close to state-of-the-art when it came out a few years ago. I think 2018 we're going to have some Battlefield news coming up a little bit later in the rundown. Uh, but this is going to look insane at 120 frames per second. Sea of Solitude, which was an indie game that EA got behind. Pretty cool game uh, with some, you know, dark story elements in there. Uh, it gets the boost up to 60 frames a second from 30 frames. And it has lots of really cool environmental uh, puzzle mechanics and stuff like that. Same thing with Unravel 2, another in, uh, indie EA Originals type experience. Um, which was a little bit frustrating, I have to be honest, with its puzzle, with its physics puzzle mechanics, uh, but still beautiful, a very lovely and lush experience, and now it's all been upgraded to 120 hertz, um, which is pretty damn impressive. It feels like every day we're getting more good news out of the Xbox camp. We did get some pretty damn good news uh, with Returnal. I was able to play that yesterday, and uh, it's super exciting. And then Jim Ryan has been saying that they've got a bunch of stealth games that they have uh, invested in that we don't know anything about that are going to be blockbusters. Lots of exclusives coming to PlayStation 5. But it does feel on the Xbox camp that there's like new additions and backwards compatibility and upgrades to previous games. 
it feels like you know, and of course the Game Pass story with with things like MLB twenty one uh, and MLB the Show twenty one added to it, uh, all pretty remarkable. Um, they're kind of on fire right now. All we need from Xbox is some exclusive stuff, some of the huge studios that they've been buying to finally deliver some experiences that just feel um, you know state of the art and incredible and fresh, kind of like what Returnal did yesterday. Uh, but uh, we're going to move on. We are going into outer space, and we're going to talk about some of the cool stuff that NASA has been doing on Mars. This is something that's been in the works for a little while. Obviously, you don't just sort of flip a switch on this, but uh, NASA's um, uh, Perseverance Mars rover had a little system on it called MOXIE, which looks like a car battery. And what it does, it actually generates oxygen. It takes the uh, carbon dioxide, I think, carbon is that carbon, di carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide that's in the atmosphere on Mars, and it superheats it and converts it, separates the oxygen atoms and molecules, and actually creates oxygen, which is insane. They also released today a little bit more of a, you know, a, a, a super detailed visual of the chopper that they've sent up there, the Ingenuity chopper that they flew from Earth and it flew on Mars and didn't fly very far, but it you, you can see it lift off and take off and create a huge dust wave or dust path underneath it, which is really cool. But this whole MOXIE concept that NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is doing is incredible. MOXIE makes oxygen uh, out of the carbon dioxide. It's kind of like a test thing that they sent up there to see if it was going to work. And it made enough oxygen, I think, to last an, a, a, an astronaut about 10 minutes. And it's, about, it's all about future exploration, because if we ever send astronauts to Mars and they've got to be be there for a little while. Not only do they have to find some way to kind of breathe in the air a little bit better, but um, obviously they want to be able to get back home and oxygen is used as propellant in, uh, in the rocket fuel that would be required for them to lift off of Mars and come back to Earth. But I mean, isn't that freaking amazing? Within a week, they've created uh, oxygen on another planet and they've flown a helicopter, you know, not to mention all the cool stuff that the rover's already doing. I'm just so impressed. I can't believe that's real life. It sounds like game mechanics, but it's actually happening on another world right now, which is crazy. All right, let's talk about that Mortal Kombat movie. Now, first of all, I want to say that Simon McQuoid, who I had a chance to speak with not too long ago, has done a pretty remarkable job there. He had to thread the needle with a very complex property, you know, with lots and lots of characters, lots of over-the-top violence and, and just insane elements and, and experiences and, and just a fan you know, fervor for. People just love Mortal Kombat. And so he had a big task in front of him. He knew that he did. And he put together a pretty damn fun movie. You can see there's a, a Goro sequence in the movie. This is a new character that Goro is fighting, uh, played by Louis Tan. His name is Cole Young. And Cole Young kind of serves the movie as a conduit to the exposition because there is a lot of backstory. I mean, this is uh, you know, rebooting the whole Mortal Kombat experience. They do throw in the classic Mortal Kombat theme music, but it's all brand new. And what's interesting about this movie is that it really felt like something out of the 90s, and I think it kind of had to feel like something out of the 90s, um, but it, it has a freshness in terms of production value. They don't skimp on, uh, you know, violent sequences, and the fight sequences are really well put together, and all of the actors are up to the challenge. There's some really, really great, um, you know, acrobatic type stuff in here, um, and there's some really cool special effects, but in terms of performances and dialogue, like... I didn't really know too many of the actors. You've seen them in, in uh, you know, lots of movies. You'll see them uh, like um, uh, Sang Shang Soon is played by Chin Han, who you've seen in lots of things. I think Joe Taslam is one of the most famous people in here. Um, and I loved uh, Hiroyuki Sonata. I think he, I tweeted yesterday that he's a total legend. He plays uh, Scorpion. He's fantastic in this movie. Uh, but there are a lot of people that, you know, you may have seen filter across the screen before, um, but they haven't really been the center stage prime actors. 
you know, like McCod Brooks plays Jackson this, and he does an excellent job. And the mo- most, the thing that I can recognize him in is the Supergirl show. He was playing Jimmy Olsen. That's the only other place I've seen the guy, but he really does stand out. But it, there is this disconnect and familiarity with a lot of these actors, but that also allows them to kind of just inhabit the role. And I think that that's a pretty cool thing. Um, you know, it's not like we're seeing Oscar worthy performances. They're not getting, they're not, you know, memorizing lines from an Oscar worthy script or anything like that. It's, it's just, you know, it's kind of silly and over the top with some, uh, uh, really crazy fatalities. And there are some gory, gory bits, um, I was a big fan, actually, of uh, this Liu Kang, who I've never seen before, or at least I, I didn't recognize from anything. Um, and I forget what his name is. I forget the uh, the actor's name. Uh, oh, is uh, Ludi Lin. He's great. And I also liked Max Huang as Kung Lao, um, who are uh, terrific together. They're, they're fantastic. They've got some really cool action beats in there. Everybody is up to it, you know? That's the cool thing. There's... Um, I, I think that fighters were cast, people with some chops and some athletic gracefulness. And that, I think, serves the movie quite well because that's what you're expecting. You're not expecting it to be uh, a Christopher Nolan, uh, you know, interstellar or something like that. This is not a Wes Anderson experience. Although, now that I've said that, I really want Wes Anderson to make a Mortal Kombat movie. How do we kickstart that? That would be amazing. Um so I think that it serves the property quite well. I think that these actors, uh, they do a commendable job. Um, I wasn't like blown away by anybody. And there were certainly moments in the movie where it felt like people were standing in front of green screens with crazy costumes on and and uh, kind of relishing the, the hamminess of it all. Uh, but it was, it, it, I certainly had a smile on my face and I certainly enjoyed the film. And I liked... Um, you know, the flourishes and the touches and the winks to the audience and the homages. And there are just enough of the, uh, you know, the cast of Mortal Kombat characters that we know and love in this movie to kind of, uh, you know, keep us super engaged. And, you know, again, I think Simon McCoy did a, a really terrific job. This is his feature film debut. He's done a ton of work in production. Um, he's worked in the video game space on on commercials and things like that. And he's done some really good work in that direction. But this was a huge challenge for him to take on. And uh, I, I, there's a, you know, a, a go get them kind of attitude about this movie. It's like prove the naysayers wrong. And I think people are going to come away quite happy. I think that this is going to be um, something that audiences really, really dig. And I think that uh, the discerning Mortal Kombat fans out there are actually going to have a really good time with this. And uh, I got to say, like, I... I didn't really fall in line with the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. Um, It's not something that's near and dear to my heart like it is for a lot of other people. Uh, And this isn't my favorite martial arts film or my favorite video game movie. I think that still is the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, (laughs) believe it or not. Uh, But I... I actually really liked Mortal Kombat. I thought it was pretty damn fun, and it served the property and the characters quite well. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. All right, uh, let us move on. We've got a couple more things to talk about. One of them is Battlefield. Battlefield is coming back this year with a couple of different flavors. We're going to be getting uh, Battlefield 6 or whatever they're going to subtitle it. Uh, but there's also going to be a mobile game. And, and uh, you know, the uh, things are percolating. And I guess the speculation is that by E3 time frame, we're going to get to see a lot more on whatever uh, DICE is cooking up for, for Battlefield. And by the end of the year, we're going to be um, uh, diving in. And it's interesting, you know, like, Obviously, it's always been a uh, a fight between Battlefield and Call of Duty, but EA has always let DICE kind of run the show with regards to Battlefield. They haven't sort of sent it out to a bunch of different studios so they can annualize it. And and also, DICE has been working on the Battlefront game, so they've been going back and forth and, uh, with their titles. And so it feels like we have... You know, fairly large breaks with Battlefield, and I think that serves the franchise quite well. I don't, I don't know if, you know, somebody asked me in chat. I think it was yesterday whether I like Call of Duty or Battlefield more, um, and it's really hard to kind of qualify that because I think we're just pummeled by Call of Duty experiences. So it's you never can look away. Like there's always a Call of Duty in your face, and and in all of the, those different variations of Call of Duty. I have a very good time. 
but I, I think that the quality bar is is all kind of all over the place sometimes with Call of Duty titles. And Battlefield is pretty consistent, although it doesn't. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's completely floored me um, and and completely rocked my world like some Call of Duty games have in the past. So I think in this war of attrition, I I guess I would be a bigger fan of Call of Duty, but who knows, man? EA and DICE might do it with this next Battlefield experience. And obviously, uh, PUBG and uh, Call of Duty Warzone and uh, Fortnite do, are huge, huge experiences in uh, the mobile space, and Battlefield wants a piece of that. So this year is when we're, when we're going to be getting Battlefield uh, in a bunch of flavors. All right, I've got one more piece to talk to you guys about, and this is uh, something that kind of hit my inbox. It's a nice surprise. It's a game called Tandem, A Tale of Shadows, and as you can tell, it's got a very unique Victorian art style with some classic newspaper articles, some almost like um, uh, puppets or action figures or dolls uh, in, in terms of its design, uh, and it's got a lot of, it's a puzzle platformer with a really, really nice level of detail. Look at the lighting and the shadows and the reflection. Uh, it's, you know, it was a really slick looking experience. Uh, I don't know anything about this studio. I don't know who, you know, the individuals are that have crafted this. All I can go by that looks interesting to me is that, I mean, this game looks really pretty. It looks really, really nice. So it's coming out this summer on a bunch of different platforms, and it looks um, like there's going to be a lot of scrolling type of experiences in there with lots of hyper detailed and, hyper, you know, like hyper realized backgrounds and environments and stuff that you have to navigate through. A little bit like Little Nightmares, I guess. So it is kind of a... a um, a naturalism and a realism, but there's also a surrealism and an, uh, an animated sort of brushstroke throughout all of this as well. Uh, but it looks damn cool. Uh, we're going to find out a lot more of this game about this game very soon. It comes out uh, in the summertime. So that is called Tandem, A Tale of Shadows. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for the rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow with a fresh episode for you. Thank you to all of our subscribers out there, and thank you especially to all of our EPN members. We'll see you tomorrow, and until then, play forever. Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for April 22nd. On this day in 2007, the Pokemon franchise got a whole new system. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl were released on the Nintendo DS in North America following their release in Japan a few months earlier. They were the first games in the series released on the DS and the dual screen format was perfectly suited for the familiar Pokemon gameplay. Diamond and Pearl were also the first games in the series to feature online multiplayer, allowing players to battle each other over the Nintendo Wi-Fi service. Like most of the other games in the Pokemon Pokemon series, Diamond and Pearl were a success, and an enhanced remake called Pokemon Platinum was released a year later. Online gaming just wouldn't be the same without fiber optic communication. On April 22, 1977, optical fiber was used for telephone communication for the first time in the Italian city of Turin, making it the first major metropolitan city to switch to the new kind of cable. Other cities like Chicago followed and began using optical fiber the same year. Unlike traditional cables, which typically send electrical signals, optical fiber uses beams of light to send information, meaning that signals can be sent much faster over greater distances with no electrical interference. Optical fiber has played a crucial role in the development of modern day communication systems, particularly the internet. Take me out to the ball game on April 22nd, 1876. That's when the first game was played in the National League, which was a precursor of the modern day MLB. The National League was founded in order to have a strong centralized authority over all the different professional baseball clubs that had sprung up across the United States and Canada, and the first game was played between the Philadelphia Athletics and the Boston Baseball Club in Philly. The National League grew in popularity and power and eventually merged with other baseball leagues to form the MLB in 1903. Hey, 
and welcome to EPN Plays. Today, we're going to check out a game called Scourgebringer. Um, the PR company repping this uh, shot me a, an email asking if I'd like to take a look at this title. It came out last year. It was uh, quite well received, and it's just hit the PlayStation 4 and the Vita, and I said, I'd like to stream this. And they said, well, I guess you don't want a Vita game <laughs> uh, because, because it's still a little bit tricky to stream uh, titles on the uh, on the Vita, uh, but this is a PS4 game, and I'm playing it in backwards compatibility on the PlayStation 5. Um, so let's jump in. It is a uh, a rogue light, and I, that's about all I know about it. It's like a 2D retro flavored rogue light. Um, but let's check it out together, shall we? Okay, so we're just gonna jump right in. Hopefully, uh, the audio mix is okay. Scorchbringer is a challenging game, but fear not, the game uses an adaptive difficulty system which scales with your skill to smooth out your experience. If you're looking for the raw deal, you can disable the adaptive difficulty. Okay, we, I, I think I will need that adaptive difficulty. <laughs> uh, miles ahead, I may. Um, asking about near, near replicant. Um, I may. I, I I do have a nice collection of things that I'm currently processing to come back and review for you. Um, but I am a big fan of Platinum, and I did like Nier quite a bit. So, um, let's see. If it would be amazing if you were to figure out how to stream a, a Vita game on EP. Um, I, I I am figuring that out, Vaz Vegas. We call it the Scourgebringer. I'm missing all the story here. Okay, so I, I believe my sword is the... Go forth, child. You are the strongest of us all. All right, here we go. The flaming hair. Let's go. Vita means life. Megatech body. Discover what unspeakable sin we have committed. Face the ordeal. Change the judgment. All right, let's go. PSP was great. Vita was great. Louis Arius. And, and Sony saved it. Uh, Brad Learnout, that's the game that I'm, I'm, that's the, the game I'm playing in my brain. But I, I can't stream any more of Burnout. And I thought about talking a little bit about it. You know what, I will talk a little bit about it because I can do a preview thing. So I'll talk about it tomorrow with uh, my wrap-up reviews on uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and my episode review of um, uh, Infamous. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, Returnal tomorrow. Um, okay, hostile environment detected, enabling anti-threat protocols. Proceed with caution. I've got a blast dot thirty-two thing beside me. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Uh, it's kind of cute. This this little character is all hair. Okay, all right. It's got a little um, super meat boy, dead cells kind of thing. Oh, look at that! All kinds of cool stuff in the background. Lots of little interactive bits. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but... Okay. Lockdown in progress. Unknown threat spotted. Suggest dispatching using force to lift the lockdown. All right, now I can stab. Okay. Okay. I did some hacking and some slashing. Out of range enemies suggest dash attacks to reach distant distant threats. Okay. Yeah, it's from that Meat Boy uh, Dead Cells camp, which is cool. I am good with that. Caution: You can be harmed during dash attacks. Okay. Long reach required. This is kind of like I'm playing 2D uh, Returnal today. <laughs> I guess we can't play uh, Returnal every day, right? We can't get a, a game as big as a, a Sony first-party exclusive every day. Get up there! What do I do? No. There it is. R1. Okay, weakness analyzed. A heavy smash attack will be very effective if timed properly. Also got a little uh, finding of Isaac here because we're going room to room. Okay. Okay. 
There it is. Strong attack is triangle. Gotcha. Okay, so daze him with the uh, the triangle hit, and then slash him with the square button. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, weaponry refilled. Long uh, uh, long range bullets available. Blast for rapid disposal of threats. Okay. And how do I do that? What is it? There it is. Trigger button. It's pretty cool, guys. It feels good. Okay, what am I doing? I'm going over here. If you wish to survive, take the blood. If you want the ordeal, take the blood. If you seek judgment, take the blood. The blood grants power. Cool. All right, here we go. Oh! Ah, look at me go. You can shoot while you're in the air, too. That's pretty cool. Okay, quantum distortions detected. Analyzing. Identification of a portal to an unknown place. Possible exit enabling mapping sensors. All right, let's go. Um... How not to play. MK is good. Don't expect Oscars, but it's good. They they uh, they rep the franchise quite well. It would be hilarious if Mortal Kombat was in the Oscar. <laughs> what kind of a world would that be? Uh, and the winner for best picture, Mortal Kombat. Oh. Got a little enter the gungeon kind of quality to it too. This is fun. Little Smash TV. But it's a roguelite and I'm gonna die and I'm gonna lose all my progress and feel bad. Oh! Oh, come on now. Oh, no bullets. I need to drink some blood. Yes! So it's got some uh, rumble in the controller, not um, the haptic feedback that we were getting with Returnal yesterday, but it feels pretty good. The controls are great. Um, have I been in here? Oh. Yeah, I like it. There's uh, a lot of strategy with how you're going to take out all the bad guys on the fly like that. Oh, yes. Oh, no bullets. What does this do? Nothing. Oh, no! Back to the beginning. Uh, oh, by Spikes. Spikes in 2D games. They always get you right away. Um, the, yes, XGR, the review was a little bit earlier in the program. All right, let's get up here. Oh. I guess I have to clear a room before I read the chat. That's my reward. Oh, that's cool. You feel like a badass. This is pretty fun. 
Uh, really excited about the uh, Shang... Uh, no, it's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Me too, Peter Kokosar. Uh, I was looking forward to it, but I had to eat dinner. I will definitely watch it later, though. It's important to eat dinner. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I had to start a little bit later. The embargo was 4 p.m. today, so I, could, I couldn't review it any uh, earlier than that. 4 p.m. my time in the West Coast. Oh! Oh! Okay. Would love a little health. Where can I get some? Whew. Oh, the blood gives me a little bit of health? Is that what it does? Does the line go up at all? Music's pretty hard rocking. She is uh, vicious, man. All over the board. Oh! Sounds like the Doom soundtrack, Tiago Santes says. I like the music, it's good. Yeah, the reviews are all hitting right now, Blair Farrell. Okay. This feels good. It's certainly fun to play. I wish I was invulnerable when I dashed, but I guess I would make the game too easy. Get up there. Okay. That's so good. Shit. Spikes, are you your enemy? Dead. Oh, not yet. Get up. Don't go near the spikes. Yeah! Oh. Oh. Oh my god, how am I alive still? Okay. Oh! Ah. Oh my god. Okay. The blood of your enemies is currency is pretty metal, Megatech uh, body. Yes, it is. I dig that. Nintendo Boy 17 digging uh, um, Immortals Phoenix uh, Rising. How is it on the Switch? I've got it on the PlayStation 5, and it's a beaut. And Elias is great in the game. Yes, he is. Oh. I like um, slashing and slicing everybody on the screen, and then your last your last hit is is like the Indiana Jones shot from uh, it doesn't just from waist high <laughs> doesn't even aim. But there you go, you're out. All right. Yeah, it's pretty pretty badass soundtrack too. This is fun, man. Yes. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. I need one of those blood portal things. Where might that be?
Fall. Shoot. Okay. Oh, thank you, XGR. You're super kind. Not as good looking as the other versions. Still super playable. Does it feel um, especially Zelda clone-like on the Switch? Because you've been playing Breath of the Wild on the same platform? Alright, here we go. Come on. Let's see if we can get a little farther this time. Oh! Oh, here we go. Welcome, dear. What is the young girl like you doing in a place like this? Killing everyone. The ordeal. Right, right. How noble of you. May, may I be of help? I'm greed to serve you. Wandering merchant and serious blood amateur. What could make you happy? To have a look. Don't be shy. Oh, and I don't take money. I want those shiny droplets of yours. Okay. So I have 30 droplets. I can get a cucumber. That's it. Hmm. I could get... If I had money, I could get this heavy laser. Or some HP. But all I can get is a cucumber. I, I will get the damn cucumber then. That's it. That's a lot, that's a lot of blood for a cucumber. Alright. I got it. I got that cuke. I, I do enjoy cucumbers. It's a good vegetable. Okay. I don't know why I bought the cucumber, guys. I'm regretting my decision. Okay. Get it! Get! Alright, let's go this way. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> the guitar just ramps up. Okay, great. Shield, now we're getting somewhere. I think they uh, they turned down the difficulty a bit for me. They're saying, this button masher, he needs some help. Ah, there we go, give me your blood. Thank you. Give me your blood. Yes, oh. Oh, 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 what is this? Extra rounds, okay. Uh, all right, yeah, I'm getting the pull here. This is cool. Ooh, that hurt. Nice. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Let's see what's down here. Spikes, my nemesis. Yeah, okay, all right, I'm getting the flow. The music is just screaming. <laughs> Let me know if it's too loud. Uh, let's see. I also hate tomatoes, but love ketchup. Oh, you guys are talking about vegetables because I bought a, uh, I bought a cucumber. Hello, Jordan Cunningham. Oh yeah, Immortals uh, does minus the weapon degradation, which drives my Zelda loving younger brother nuts. Mm. Hey Vic, are you gonna play uh, Battle Axe when it comes out? Anyone else? Uh, refresh my memory on what Battle Axe is. The game looks wicked, Jacob LaBelle. It's pretty damn wicked. It's pretty damn fun. So this is out today, actually, on, uh, is it the Switch? I think it's PlayStation and Vita, and I'm not sure, I'm sure this is on the Switch. It has a generic name, like Scour Scourgebringer sounds like a GBA game that I've got buried in a, in a drawer somewhere.
but that's okay. Games can not be named the best, but they can still be super fun. Okay, what's here? What's here? Vault sealed. Quantum distortions detected. Okay. So, um... I we'll have to hack and slash this thing? What's up? Why is it glowing red? Truth down, missing X-Men Clone Wars. Fantastic. Yeah, I love doing the side-scrolling superheroes. By the way, I started my process of getting vaccinated. It's the Pfizer uh, vaccine. Right on, Nintendo boy. I'm down on two wait lists, but I haven't uh, heard from anybody yet. Um, I'm about to start calling local pharmacies to see what's up. What up? Yo, where can a brother come and get his uh, vaccination? Is that possible? I would like to get my vaccination, please. All right, come on, let's go. It's a little weird in Canada. Uh, it sounds like America is going to start helping us out with some... Uh, or it's a little weird in Canada, I mean. Uh, it sounds like um, America is... Did I say that? I, can't, I don't know what I said. Uh, but it sounds like America is going to help us with some vaccines finally, which is good. We got a lot of people getting sick and a lot of people wanting to get the uh, vaccination and, and they can't get it. Am I excited for Resident Evil 8? You know I am. I, I streamed a little bit of the demo. It was great. Terrifying. Ah, Randall Hyatt's got both the shots. Fantastic. Greetings from Georgia. Right on, Faye Brand. Nice to see you. Ah! I can't read and play this game. <laughs> I have to clear the rooms before I read the chat. All right, gimme. Grooving. Uh, Faybrand7, no, I have not gotten the shot yet. I, I really want one. I'm on a couple of wait lists, but... Uh, oh, come on. Uh, um, Scott Michael Heads, the RA demo is pretty damn great. Yep, crossing some thresholds there, Nintendo Boy 17 the world is finding out that I, you know, we've got the YouTube channel going here. What time is the castle demo, Blair Farrell? Psst, you're new here, right? Have you talked to Garrow? You work with him. Good. I'm peppy. I love this. I can see you need help. Yes, I do. Here, take this. Um, no, I don't want your blood. You shouldn't give it away. Blood is more than power. Wow, well, I, I so gave my blood away for a cucumber. I wish I had met you before, Peppy. Uh, take care. Thank you. Um, can I get, take them all, or do I have to choose? Why, why do I have to choose? So, um, <clears throat> crystal heart, shovel, shuriken. What's this thing? Double extra rounds. I think we're going to take the, the health. Did I get the health? I did. Okay, and I'm going to take the shurikens. Oh, I can take it all. Well, you know what? I'm taking it all. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Peppy. All right. Your namesake in Star Fox um, uh, was annoying, but cute. All right, here we go. Grooving. It's too hard to follow the RE demo flowcharts, the Resident Evil flowcharts. That's awesome. 30 minutes does fly by way too fast, absolutely. Secrets. Let's go. Are you 
feel a little more badass now all of a sudden. Cool. store over there, it looks like. Oh! Shit! Spikes! Okay. Let's see what's going on. This guy. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I have to give up my heart? I don't want to do that. No, I'm not giving up my lifespan. That's crazy. Let's see. Let's go up here. What's up here? Uh oh. Oh, sh. Spike. I like this game, guys. Not great at it, but it's cool. Ah. Oh! Oh! Oh, man. That was a bullet hell moment there. Uh, okay, temp number seven. Here we go. Combat looks satisfying. Kind of reminds me of Hades. It's... It, I mean, it's like a lot of the roguelites that are out there, for sure. But it's fun. I'm digging it. Alright, let's go. Roguelites are kind of like classic arcade games. Where you're trying to get as far as you can for a quarter. Alright, here we go. Oh, yeah, I have no money. Aptly named their greed. Oh! How do you avoid that? Get out of my face! Got ya. Cool. Oh! 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 Oh no! <laughs> I figure we'll do... We'll do three more runs. That gives us a good look at Scourge Bringer. So we'll see how far I can go. Um, oh. Get it. Nice. Ooh, a little help. Uh, power up, okay. Groovy. So you guys gonna um, check out Mortal Kombat this weekend, or are you gonna wait a little bit? I know you're all gonna watch it. <laughs> I would, I would, I would pretty much bet most of you at least will watch this movie. We're all curious, right? We're all believers. We're true believers in video games. We want, we want to see them uh, represented well. Ah! Oh my God! I can't wait to uh, talk to Ed Boon about it. Oh boy, I'm sucking. Um. Same developer as Flinthook. Uh, no, that's Tribute, I believe. Their, Tribute is the uh, the company that's bringing um, 
uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to us. Oh, yes, the, uh, the Dice Awards. I'll do a little wrap-up on that. And that is an excellent choice, Randall Hyatt. I got HBO Canada thinking it will be be there and not. Only American one has it. That's right, Truth Down. They really wanted to uh, um, increase the subscriber base for HBO Max. They're really trying to get into that 100 million mark as quickly as possible. Disney Plus has just been crushing it. Showing people that it can be done quickly. And so, of course, Warner Brothers and HBO Max want that, too. Okay, so what are we doing here? What does this do? Oh, okay. When you have one HP left, all damages are increased by 50%. Uh, judges drop more items with at least one health item. Increase the reach of the smash. I think we're going to turbo the loot. This is a good game, guys. I can feel it. I'm not doing well. But it's got its hooks on me, in me. Um, just like Cabal. Um, and I'm liking it. I can appreciate its, its beauty. Yeah, baby. All right, let's go down here and see what's down here. That kind of screech as I'm going into each room has got a very Zelda vibe. That, it's like the uh, the dead creatures that you face off in underneath graveyards. The Zelda zombies. Z zombie mummies. There we go. Alright. Oh yes! Meant to do it. There is a lot of, like, how the heck am I going to slash my way through this thing, and then every once in a while you get that one shot that, that you needed. And those spikes, man, those spikes can F right off. <laughs> Brought those over from Mega Man. Sons of bitches. Hate you, spikes. Okay. Let's go! Yes! Oh! I need health. I'm dead. Damn it! Mm. Oh, okay, let's read a couple things here. Disney Plus is my everything. They're they're killing it right now. I've I uh uh I don't know I don't know what I I watched something that's coming up on May the fourth today, um, and I've got some stuff coming uh, around that. Uh, Tiago Santos, I'm at the point where oop, I hate seeing movies with other people now. Oh, hilarious! Uh, if this is on the Switch, I'm a buy-in. Uh, Papana, I'm really curious if, uh, if Scourge Bringers on the Switch. Uh, let me let me do the Google. You guys can all Google along with me at home, playing the home game. Um, I'm sure it is. Um, I did not type in Scourge Bringer correctly at all. Okay, it's Upper Burger Burger, Scourge Bringer. It's amazing that I've had uh, a dozen iPhones over the years. Yeah, it's on the Switch. came out in October last year. That's a good fit for this. But plays just fine on the PlayStation. I see Kenneth Crawley out there. K Kenneth, I saw your very nice tweet, my friend. Thank you so much for the support. You rock. PS Vita hits PS Vita today. PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4. Uh, and I'm playing it on the PlayStation 5. I don't... I think there's separate purchases, though. I don't think there's cross-buy. Remember cross-buy? I hope we get to the day where nice I didn't hit the I didn't hit the floor at all where every game you buy digitally y you've got it on whatever system is coming up next you know like I would love Microsoft to just come out and flat out say that because they're 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 furthest along with that and then that would force everybody else to be in that boat so any classic games that you pick up on switch you should be able to play them on whatever supersedes the switch Backwards compatibility should just be a given. We should never have the discussion about it. It should just work forever. And that whole cross-play thing that Sony did with... Uh, I mean, it was nice at the time. It was, it seemed generous, but 
the switch makes that moot, right? And you have systems that uh, are dual purpose like that. And honestly, I don't know why Sony doesn't just do that. Why don't they just make a PS4 um, handheld that will play all the PSP everything from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 4 in handheld? I mean, I who wouldn't want that? Open up the store, have a streaming service. You can dock it. Why wouldn't they want that? That's money on the table. All of us would buy that, right? Comment, speaking of backwards compatibility, Nintendo Boy17 saying, thanks for doing the googlies, Pupana. <laughs> well, I was curious. I think that this game should absolutely ex exist on the Switch. I missed what that person said to me, or that character said to me. Okay, so this is the boss, but I can't get through. I need some kind of thing. I need a key or some magical artifact or something, I think, right? Like, it does feel like when I'm smashing it that it glows red, but... I don't think I'm doing any real damage to that. All right, let's go. Uh, we're, we are going up. Up, up, up! That was from Superman. Quoted that yesterday. All right, here we go. Oh! You guys excited about Falcon and the Winter Soldier finale? I am. I am super excited. Cannot wait. Um, that's going to be a fun Friday. Or very late Thursday night. Oh! I'm also... Shit. Okay. I'm going to try to chill on the talking and pay more attention. Let's see how far I go. But they said it's a challenging game. They were not wrong. Um... Is there like the, the baby mode? Can I go into baby level? Uh, welcome to the chiming tree. It's the tree who keeps us alive. Who am I? Garo, I guess. I'm from the expedition six or is that 16? You're not a seeker. Let's see a warrior. Oh, well. A little cave story. Kenneth Crawley is all in. Uh, who said uh, cave story? Dr. Game Love and Kenneth Crawley is in on Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Miles ahead. I, I am envious. Enjoy that. Enjoy that uh, binge. You're gonna have a good time with that. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second here. Whoa, 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 whoa! Upgrades. Yes. Okay, that's all I could do. All right, let's go. Okay, this is it. I'm paying attention. This is my last run. I'll have some uh, catch up on the chat after I. I waste everything. Stay away from the... It's fun. Okay. There we go. Alright, what you got for me? Take this. Okay, oh, you got everything for me. I'll take it all. What do I have? Oh, I have uh, nunchucks. That's cool. And this this cat knows Garo. Okay. I don't know where what I did with my nunchucks. Where'd they go? Oh. 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 This is fun. Okay. Uh, let's cross over here. Off the spikes. Oh. Okay. Earth-based technology. Right there. What is this? Nexus computer. Uh, a corrupted disk. Hear us. We're inside. We think we reached is a cycle. Sacrifice. End of log. All right. Bosses. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, that was good. Oh! Oh! 
Oh, yes! <laughs> Seismic activity detected. Disposing of this threat might have unblocked an exit. Fantastic. Watch for those spikes. Okay, cool. Yeah, this game's great. Yeah. Um, instant mod. Adds a random mod to your current weapon. Enemies have 25%. Let's get that. So, you lose these, I guess, as uh, you start a new run. Okay, let's go down into the blood store. Do I want the blood store? No. Screw that guy. Let's go over this way. She's so agile. Yes. All right. Oh, this is great. Oh, you jerk. Okay, I need some health. A sap. Uh oh. <laughs> wow. You just go crazy on these bad guys. Got the little bat. Woo! Nice! Okay. Let's go this way. Uh oh. Oh! Watch out! Oh, jeez. Didn't know who I was there for a second. Okay, these guys. Yes! Give me just a tiny bit of health, please. What do I gotta do? Oh, yeah! Okay. I'm feeling it. Watch out for the spikes. Oh no. Oh no. I'm gonna go spend some blood on this dude here. What do I got here? Uh, what is this? Okay. I'm gonna eat a slub kebab. There we go. That's it. Okay. Had to do it. Wow. Okay. I keep looking over there because I'm looking at the map in the top corner there. Uh, here we go. Guys, this is a great game. Oh, oh. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Damn it. Whew. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Nice, okay. More of those, please. Oh, man. I don't have any dough. Uh, oh, do I? No, I don't. Okay, let's go down. Oh! All right. Uh-oh. I'm so dead. <laughs> oh, I've already lost it. I'm dead. 
Oh, okay. Well, this is excellent. Um, yeah, that was a nice little taste of uh, Scour- Scourge Bringer. Um, I highly recommend you check that out. If you're into uh, roguelites, if you're into the indie scene out there, um, it's a very, very well-made game. That was very fun. Uh, let's see what we got here. I, I think I'm just more open to it than any another looter shooter, but yeah, and the, the gear is bland, so no doubt so far. Uh, Vic's pretty damn good at this game. Ah, you, you start to feel the flow, you know? It's it's a good game. I was having a lot of fun. Tastes good. It does. Um, let's see. Uh, I missed a bunch of chat bits because I was uh, trying to play. A little roguelite Metroidvania. Yes, Pupana. Tiago Santos is saying that uh, Santos is saying he's seen a bit uh, too much of this type of game. I totally get that. Dr. Game Love says, I finally played Avengers now that it is optimized. Why did everyone hate it so much? I don't think people hate it. I just think that there's a repetition to... I, I really liked it, but I had my fill. And, it, you know, um, I talk to Blair Farrell. He's played the hell out of that game. And there's only so many AIM robots I can fight and chests with gear nearby to open. But it, it does make a great 20-hour um, introduction, doesn't it, Blair? Like, it's a cool 20 hours. And then it's just like, oh, I've seen your your magic. Um, Scott Michael Hedge, I still don't know what the difference is between rogue-like and light. Seems every game is one or the other these days. Uh, I, that's a good question. I, I'm, I don't know if I'm the, the person qualified to define any of that stuff. I didn't play roguelikes on PC back in the day, which is, I think, where they uh, originated. Uh, Vic, you looking forward to Mass Effect Remastered, Tiago Santos? Absolute Santos. I keep saying Santos. Uh, Santos, absolutely. I can't wait for that. Um, I would think that there are enough fans of the series who would kill for a new F-Zero. Uh, Nintendo's been talking about F-Zero recently. Developers saying that they're trying to figure out how to bring it back. But I agree. I think that would be really fun. Um, so we're getting a Knights of the Old Republic port HD remake on Switch. Was that just announced today, Jer- Jacob? I mean, it's in the news. Lots of rumors, lots of leaks. But was it officially announced? Because uh, that's good news. If it is, um, it's supposed to be a remake, not just a remaster. Um, speaking of comic book characters, isn't the new Spawn movie coming to HBO Max this year? I don't know if it's coming this year, Nodding 56. Um, unless there is an animated thing or something in the works, but I, yeah, I think there's been some issues with Todd McFarlane getting that movie off the ground. Uh, let's see. Hey, Vic, been a serious fan since the Judgment Day reviews on the run days on G4. I'm curious, have your opinions on games you and Tommy reviewed back then changed at all if you've revisited uh, any of them later? That is an excellent question. Um, and that happens for sure. That is an excellent question, though. Rogue-like, Acnode Sis says, uh, rogue-like means text-based game with permadeath and no items or abilities carried through. And roguelite is the light form of a roguelike with upgrades carried through and not text-based. There you go. Thank you for that definition, Acnode Sis. Uh, how, ready am I, how ready am I for uh, Resident Evil 8? pre-ordered myself i'm freaking so excited i can't wait to stream it i can't wait for you all to hear me scream um i streamed the vr version of uh, resident evil 7 and uh it was humiliating (laughs) but it was it was uh, incredible they're they're just so talented at capcom aren't they they've they've been killing it um okay you guys i'll be back again tomorrow with a fresh rundown for you and uh looking forward to having you back for that if you can join us thank you all so much for being here the game i played was uh, scourge bringer on the playstation 5 i'll be talking a little bit about returnal and the falcon and the winter soldier and uh, uh invincible tomorrow so please come back for that thank you so much and uh, we'll see you tomorrow until then play forever